Get to Old Navy Saturday and Sunday just in time for back to school. Girls and boys polos are three bucks in stores only. Plus, Saturday only jeans are ten bucks for adults, seven bucks for kids at Old Navy and Old Navy.com. Valid eight ten to eight eleven. Limit five polos, select styles only. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. your host, Sarah, one of your hosts. Tate will be joining me in this episode. Uh, Tate and I recently sat down to speak with um, Stacey Chalemi, who is, well, she's a lot of things, actually. <laughs> she has got, she wears a lot of hats. She is um, a holistic expert, author, writer, health and re- health and healing speaker, dedicated yogi, holistic wellness enthusiast, and herbal guide lifestylist. So she does a lot of things, um, but she, um, she writes and speaks about holistic health, holistic health, um, n- herbal health, natural ways of, of helping your body be healthier, etc. And she's going to talk a lot more about that herself and give you an idea. She has, um, been on shows like Dr. Oz. She is a speaker. She has written, I think she said over 20 books. She is a health coach and um, just, she does a lot. I, I, I don't know if she actually sleeps, although she talks about sleep and the importance of it. So I think she must sleep, but she is a really interesting woman. And um, I think I'm going to let the interview speak for itself because you don't need me to tell you what Stacy's about to tell you in the interview. So let's go ahead and turn to that interview with um, Stacy Chalemi. Hi, Stacy. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It is wonderful. And I do have Tate here with me to uh, speak with you today. Hello, Stacy. How are you doing there? Good. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Now, I'm going to start things off by saying I'm a little jealous because uh, I understand you've been uh, traveling a little bit. Do you want to tell our audience where you've been and what what you've uh, seen? Oh, well, I took about three weeks off from my job, and I flew down. I saw Croatia. I went to Italy. I um, visited uh, different areas of Italy that um, you hear so much about. I went to uh, Florence, and I uh, I went to see the uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa, and I went to a lot of different places like the Mafia Coast, and then I flew over to uh, Greece, and I went to a bunch of different islands in Greece, and I actually went to Athens and saw some family that I haven't seen in over a decade. Nice. Now, I'm going to like, one quick question about your travels is you brought up one place that I have been curious about because I've heard it is quite amazing, but it's not a traditional place that a lot of Americans travel to, and that's Croatia. How did you what did you think of Croatia? And what what made you go there? It's really nice. Um I heard a lot of nice things about it. It's you know, it's Italy's neighbor and uh it's you know, it's just it's a beautiful country. It's uh you know, you don't really hear too much about it, but a lot of people that um you know, like to travel, know about it. They like to go there because the scenery is so beautiful. The water is crystal clear. It looks aqua blue, and you can see all the way to the bottom. And a, a lot of people like to get away just to receive some calmness and relax and get away from the stresses of life. That's a, definitely a, a country to visit, and they preserved a lot of history there, too. So you get to see a lot of things um, that were there for hundreds of years, and it, it's really a, a nice place to, to go to if you have, you know, a week or two to spare. Yeah, I kind of heard that. I, I heard it's pretty amazing. So, I mean, you, a lot of the places that you went were some of the traditional places that you went. But when I heard Croatia, I'm like, wait a minute, this is 
this is a great opportunity to learn a little bit more here that you know yeah. you don't traditionally hear about. Right, exactly. And I, I mean, I would love to hear everything, but uh, since we are here to talk about health and wellness, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's healthy to travel. That's, it's good for right. your well-being that's to right. travel. But so. let's. Let's actually get to know you a little bit, Stacy. If you could share a little bit about yourself and the work you do, that would be great. Okay. Well, um, I am a health coach, and I focus on natural healing, how to heal the body naturally. I started many years ago. Um, I've been um, helping people for uh, over two decades. Um, I had uh, re I had developed epilepsy at the age of five years old, and I struggled all my life with trying to find a way to control my seizures. And over the years, um, when I went to college, I was really struggling. I'm like, you know, how am I going to do this if if I can't control you know the seizures I'm having? And I really you know I really wanted to move on with my life. And so I I decided to write an article, and I. Wrote wrote an article into the epilepsy organization and I talked about my illness and I talked about, you know, you know, I asked them if they could post the letter I wrote and I asked other people to share with me how they deal with the disorder and how they cope with it and how they get on with their lives. And surprisingly, I received over three to 400 letters from all, the, all over uh, the United States and Canada and uh, people were sharing with me um, about their illness, how they cope with it. And it was amazing. And at that point, I realized that, you know, that I wasn't alone and that, you know, that everyone has something, uh, you know, and that, you know, you really have to, you know, do your best to try to live with it and to try to cope with it. So um, with all those letters, it was such an inspiration. I actually put a, a book together called Epilepsy, You're Not Alone. And I, you know, it took me seven years to finish it because, you know, between college and my career, um, I fin finally finished the book and it actually hit a bestseller on Amazon. And people from all over were um, were writing to me and, and thanking me for writing the book because there wasn't many um, books out there on epilepsy. And um, I, uh, you know, I really uh, saw how it helped people and I was like, wow, you know, I never thought, realized how words could have such an impact on people's lives. But it really does. People really, uh, you know, can change their lives by reading an article or listening to someone, you know, with an inspiring story. And then um, I had started to work for an herbalist, and I had started to do a lot of research for him, and I started to learn a lot of things that I wasn't aware of. And I actually started to apply a lot of those things to my own life. And I started to do different things like detoxification, using different herbs, changing my lifestyle, my sleeping habits, doing a lot of different things. And, you know, I was able to actually get my seizures under control, and I was able to move on with my life. And I started out with a little blog on Blogger, and it was like 400 people starting to go on, and then all of a sudden 10,000. And now we have over 200,000 followers on our website. It's been amazing. And I actually wrote a book to teach people because I said, you know, if I could help people with epilepsy and I can help myself, you know, it, you know, you could actually use the same techniques and, and apply a lot of these healthy living techniques to, to anything, to just improve your life, to tweak your life, to help a condition like high blood pressure. So I wrote a 500-page book on, on epilepsy on um, uh, herbals and to teach people how to use herbals and how to help themselves as well. So that's what I've been doing, and that's how I got started. That is pretty amazing. Uh, you know, when you talk about epilepsy, uh, most a lot of people that don't deal with it or don't have a family member may not know a lot about it, but I'm familiar with it from being when I'm a lot older now. But when I was a young kid, I had a school teacher that actually had epilepsy, and for the most part, she had she was just a normal teacher. But then every once in a while, a few times uh, a few times a year, she would have like a seizure, and so everyone would have to know about that. And so I'm very I'm very aware of of you know what comes with epilepsy. Uh, so. What are some of the things that you did? Like, how long? One, how long has it been since you've had a seizure? And what are some of the things when you talk about like diet and exercise? What are some of the things that you've done to uh, control it? Well, it's been a long time since I've, since I've had a seizure, but I've been actually um, what I had to do is really change my lifestyle and change my way of living. I had to learn how to. Um, 
you know, eat differently. I was eating a lot of carbohydrates. I was eating a lot of food that had a lot of sodium in it. And that was actually making me very, um, it was it was causing a lot of inflammation. And a lot of, people don't realize, but inflammation, when you, you feel bloated and your body looks swollen, it's not just in, uh, water in your in your body, but you actually have water on your brain too. And sometimes for a person with epilepsy, that pressure could actually trigger a seizure, just having too much inflammation in your body itself. And I had to change my eating habits. I did a whole detoxification on my body where I just cleansed my entire body out. And then I started fresh and I started eating healthy. I started focusing on vegetables. I started knocking out a lot of meat out of my diet. I started to just eat a lot of, a lot of healthier foods. And I also started to exercise. You know, people don't realize, but you don't have to be in the gym for two hours. You could go to, you know, and exercise, you know, very, you know, lightly for uh, like – 15 minutes to a half an hour and you know that that may be all the exercise that you need you just need to circulate the blood and you really need to just you know keep your body moving and you know and for people who lose weight there's other ways including exercise that kind of work together you know um there's uh you know and then i worked on my sleeping habits which you know i had to really focus on getting enough of sleep and not putting stress on my body so people don't realize but stress has so much impact uh, sleep has so much uh, impact and it can cause so, so much stress on your body. 90% of the illnesses are caused by st- stress on the body. So, you know, you can only imagine. And, and when I was with Ariana Huffington, she had just wrote a book that I reviewed for her, and she was telling me um, that she almost died from sleep deprivation, from not getting enough of sleep. So that tells you right then and there how important oh, wow. sleep is. Yeah. Wow. But. I'm sorry, I just my, I, I, all I can say is wow. Um, <laughs> you've actually written um, 20 books, uh, and I was just looking at the list. Um, I love that you have a couple of children's books about epilepsy. Um, can you talk a little bit about those specifically, but then any other books that you want to highlight? Oh, sure. I, I wrote two children's books. I wrote My Mommy Has Epilepsy and My Daddy Has Epilepsy. And I wrote that I had three children. I had three healthy kids. And, you know, for for children, seeing someone with epilepsy could be very scary, and it, it could really put an impact on a child. And, you know, the first time my kids saw me have a seizure, it was very scary for them. You know, I was walking the dog, and I had a seizure, and I fell to the ground. And, you know, uh, sadly, I was on, I was walking on the sidewalk, so my head hit the sidewalk, and I just got a little niche into my, on my head, and I cut my head open just a little bit, not nothing major, but as you know, when you hit your head, and if you cut your head anywhere in your, on, you will, you will yes. bleed profusely, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and so my kids were freaking out, and they, you know, and and I had just moved into this neighborhood, and and you know, I knocked on the neighbor's door. I'm like, "Hello, my name is Stacy. I'm sorry to bother you, but I, I have epilepsy, and I just cut my head. And I was wondering if you could come over while I call the ambulance. You know, it was like, you know, one of these crazy, you know, but I needed some help, oh, wow. and there was nothing to do. And and then I had to, when I came home, I had to kind of calm the kids down and really explain to them, you know, thoroughly, you know, and try to make it so they understand and. and and there's not many books out there that to explain what epilepsy is. And a lot of times, you know, for a kid, they just don't get it. It's just very, it's very scary to see anybody have a seizure. Even for an adult to see another adult have a seizure, it's very scary. So I wrote, I made pictures and I uh, just did a little, a uh, little, uh, uh, thing about the whole day that happened, and, you know, I put my kids in the pictures, and I I drew, you know, myself and walking the dog, and and then then I explained, you know, in the book, this is what you do if you have if if you have if your mommy or daddy has a seizure, you know, and I went step by step, and I made it, you know, more like, uh, you know, so it didn't seem so horrifying to a child, and you know, they kind of get it, and and if they if it happens, they'll know what to do. You know, if you listen to, well, any of the podcasts I host, that I do love books and I love when people write books that help children to understand different issues and different, um, well, complex situations that they might encounter in the world. So I really love that Stacy wrote those children's books. We are going to take our first break of the podcast. More with Stacy when we come back. So stay tuned. 
say Metro by T-Mobile, got the best deal in wireless, and it's all for you, all for me. Just switch quickly, because Metro has two lines for 80, and two Samsung Galaxy J7 Star phones for free, plus Amazon Prime included. That's the way wireless should be, only at Metro. Plus sales tax and activation fee. $50 plus rate plan required. Not valid for numbers currently on T-Mobile Network or on Metro in past 90 days. Offer subject to change. Offer valid for new Amazon Prime members. Amazon Prime has a $12.99 per month value. Restrictions apply. See store for details and terms and conditions. Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is, you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn. Ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn. Tell people to stay off the lawn. Compare it to your neighbor's lawn. And complain about having to mow the lawn again. Good news is, it's easy to bundle home and auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance, which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discount not available in all states or situations. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well... Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. her children and how that inspired her to go ahead and write two children's books about what it's like having a parent with epilepsy. So let's go ahead and get back to the interview. That's pretty amazing. As, like I, when we were talking about before having a teacher, I was very, I was very young when we had this, when I had this teacher. So I think I was like in third grade. So and then to see it, have a teacher, you know, they tell you about it, but as a little kid, you're never prepared for that. So I can understand what you're saying and having these books for someone, for their kids and things, I could see how that would be so helpful. Yeah, you know, you really, you know, especially for children and even for adults, a lot of adults don't know what to do either, you know, so it could be very horrifying, you know, and, and, and. A lot of times, like like when I when I had it when I was young, there weren't that many books out there, and the books that were written were written by doctors, and they were in you know in medical terminology. So if you were just a normal individual and you didn't have any background in the medical field, it just went over your head, and that really annoyed me. So I, I tried to put out as many books as I could on different areas, you know, to help people, to help people understand, and even with you know using you know using herbals and fitness and eating right, you know, I feel is so important because it, it can help you with any condition and uh, so you know I've been trying to teach people and you know trying to put out books to try to explain and help people gain a better understanding especially with herbals and vitamins and you know they, you know if you don't know what you're doing you actually could hurt yourself so you have to be very careful and people have to really understand you know what these herbals are what they do and how much to have and how much not to have and what ones to stay away from and so forth and also people that have you know take medications they have to to realize too that you know people that are um, on um, on high blood pressure medication or high cholesterol medication you know uh, you know any, any type of heart medication you know certain you know herbals are just as strong as m- medical drugs and a lot of times they use herbals when they're making these drugs and that shows you you know the effectiveness of these herbals when they're putting in, in medications to make a lot of the medications they have on the market so, you know, if you take one herbal and you're taking a medication, they can inter- interclide with one another, and you could actually, you know, have an interaction, you know, and not a very good one. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's say I was um, someone that was interested in changing my, my lifestyle, maybe looking into herbals, um, changing how I eat or how I exercise, and I came to you, what would our initial conversation look like as um we kind of established our relationship, me, a new client, you, the health coach. 
Well, I would first want to know what you're you're doing currently. You know, we have to go to the root of of the core. It's where you know where you know your life is at this point. What you're doing, what you're eating, how much you're exercising, everything that you're doing, and then we have to you know look at some things that might not be so good or things that you could actually tweak and make better. And you know, with uh, with eating, you know, I always like to. I think detoxification is very important because you don't even realize it. But you know, the, the food we eat, the air we breathe, even the makeup we put on our face, they all have toxins in them. And you know, over time, you know, you build toxins in your body. And a lot of times, what happens is your body doesn't know what to do with these toxins. It's not familiar with it, so it stores it. And as it's storing it, then you you, you get sluggish, and your your organs don't you. You know, act as as well as they should, and you're not you're not functioning on on the level that you actually should be functioning on. So when you detoxify and you cleanse your body from these toxins, you're actually starting your body fresh, and your body's able to function better. Your metabolism, you know, can go up. You you know you can become more energetic, more focused. Um, you can see a lot of improvements, and you know even with your conditions, you know it it could improve your condition possibly. Okay, thank you. Now, when you're, you know, listening to you, there's two, a couple of things that kind of popped out to me as I listened to you is there's, there's three that, that I, I've noticed that in someone who has taken advantage of, you know, going from a person who was not very healthy and becoming a person who has become pseudo healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I notice it's traditionally these three th- three things, which is quality sleep, exercise, and then a lot of people preach that detoxing for uh, uh, very early on. Uh, right. If you're a person who is trying to get control of your weight and your health, how important can you get the same results by not detoxing? Or do you think that detoxing is that important that it should be the first thing you do? Well, I've known many people that have dropped a tremendous amount of weight and they didn't detox, you know. Um, detox is not just about um, weight loss. It's a, it's about you know improving improving your your ultimate health, improving your 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 body, not just in weight but in how it functions and improving uh, your how you can focus mentally. Um, detoxification, you know, kind of goes into more than just weight loss. You know, I have friends and I have I know so many people that have you know have you know, focused on just eating healthy and cutting down on their portions, and they have lost a tremendous amount of weight. But to me, I don't even like the word, you know, diet, because, you know, weight loss, it's it's a way of life to me. It's, it's You know, if you it want to really stay thin is. or you want to maintain your weight, it's not about being good for so long and then going back to your old habits, because once you go back to your old habits, boom, you're going to gain the weight back, you know, and it's just, you know, it's about changing your life and changing changing the way you live, you know, and once you do it and you do it for a while, it becomes so natural that if you try to go back to your old ways, you know, you're not going to, it's not going to feel good anymore because your body is going to get so used to of functioning well when you put all those unhealthy foods in your body you're going to you're going to feel that heaviness and you're going to feel that sleepiness feeling that you get when you eat foods that don't agree with you and it's you know and you'll notice the difference your body will actually have a hard time breaking down the food because it's been it hasn't had to break down that food like that in so long yeah and that's one of the things i i find that uh going from a person who as on this show uh People that have listened to the show realize that I have lost over 130 pounds, you know, doing the keto diet and doing different things. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. But one of the things that I think people don't realize is when you, when you're, when you clean your system out and when you're, you're exercising, you're eating healthy or maintaining uh, a healthy diet, your energy level definitely goes up and you don't realize when you're when you're out of shape or when you're having issues how sluggish you are right. but as you know but when you become healthier you realize you look back and you're like wow I I was really dragging yeah and and, and I understand I'm listening to you I understand the whole point of 
you know, sometimes when you hear the word keto, it can be a negative thing because a lot of people, you think of like people just eating bacon. Mm-hmm. I did the keto diet in a more healthier way where you're eating a lot more leafy greens and right. healthy fats and, uh, and things like that. So I ate a more healthier diet, which is kind of what you're kind of pushing or not pushing, but promoting is eating yeah. a healthier, eating a more of a healthier lifestyle. Um, for someone who's just starting out, what would be some of your recommendations for, you know, as far as if they were coming to you, I know you said, you, you know, just traditionally you'd have to get a better understanding, but are there certain things that are always part of that major staple of what you should do to change your life? Well, I, I definitely, you know, think portion control is a big issue, too, because you know, what we think is normal in the United States is, is not normal. You know, um, even like if you go out of the country, you will not see portions like you see in America. You know, you go to a, a, a food restaurant and you'll see the, the, they give you portions enough for three or four days, you know, that you're supposed to eat in, in the amount of three or four days. Their portions are huge, you know. And people, you know, when you get used to going out and you see these big portions, you get accustomed to thinking that's normal, and it's not, you know. If you look at, you know, the great idea is it, look at a Weight Watchers plate. They make these little plates, and they sell them on Amazon. It tells you how much of veggies you're supposed to have, how much of meats and, and um, fish you're supposed to have, and protein and, and so forth. And, you know, you really, it's, you, your body doesn't need all that food. Your body just needs a little bit, and it, 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 it suffices. It, that's, you know, it, and you will feel full once you get used to eating normally, you know, and, and also processed foods. Processed foods kill you. They destroy your body. And we're so used to, in America, you know, eating so much processed foods. You know, we think it's normal. You know, if you go outside the country, a lot of the foods that they allow in the United States, they ban outside of the United States because it's so <laughs> unhealthy for your body. Give me and, some examples of things that you, I apologize, didn't mean to drop. I was like, some examples of things that let our audience, because I've heard this before, but it's never been kind of expressed. Do you have some examples of things that, that you can eat in the U.S. that are like banned in other countries? Well, for the for the first things that come to my head is like the dyes they use. You know, in the United States, it, it's all about marketing. So you know, people don't realize, but a lot of the food we eat has no color to it. They put dyes in it in order to make it look attractive, so people want to eat it. Like you know, um, like if you yellow let's say five. someone what? If there's a food dye yellow five, and there's a red something. Yes. Well, I know they yeah. they, dye they dye hamburger to make it look redder. And they put arsenic in chicken also to make it plumper and last longer, stay fresher. Oh, I didn't know that one. That's that's that's, yeah. a, that's a weird one there. Wow, nothing like poisoning. I, it, and all these things can give you cancer, you know, and and you know, and and they know that in other countries, and they've banned these things in other countries. You know, you they put chlorine on carrots when you buy the fresh carrots, and then if you have it in your refrigerator too long, you start seeing that white. You're thinking, oh, they're getting old. I got to throw them away. But that's the that's the chlor that's the uh, chlorine coming through. You know, and it's starting to become visible after so many days. So, you know, every time you eat a carrot, you know, think about, you know, you got to wash that thing real well because you have chlorine on top of that carrot. When you first buy it, you don't see it. Wow. So that's why they say, people say, go organic, go organic. But then America makes everything so expensive, so people can't afford to go all organic because it's, it's, a, it's a fortune in America. Yes. Yeah. But you go you go outside the country, they're growing everything in their backyard. It's amazing. I, I actually um I spoke with I do I host the Book Review podcast as well and I spoke with an author several months ago who was doing stories on people who had moved here from other countries and one of the things that came up in a lot of the stories was the food and how they were just so surprised that they didn't know where their food was coming from and they didn't recognize so many things in the grocery stores, et cetera. So it, it is. Well, a, they it look is. and they taste different. They they yeah. not only look different, but they taste different as well. They don't taste yeah. like they do in other places. Exactly. Interesting. So now talk to me about some of the other things. I, I know you, 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 so you've written a book. You've written a number of books. Yeah. And then, but you talk about you know, being a health coach, uh, 
tell me a little bit more about that and what you do with your some of the things that you do with your clients. I also teach positive thinking because a lot of clients, like I, I was, I had a client I was talking to yesterday, and you know they were discussing how some of their conditions have been causing them, you know, they they just feel, um, you know so down and and you know and it just you know and then the medications they were trying to put them on were making them feel anxious and making them feel you know um having these emotion these mood swings and and it was really harsh for them and you know one thing I you know while you're trying to you know work on on you know helping your own conditions that you might be going through in life you know positive thinking is the key and it's the, it's the key to anything even weight loss it's the key to just surviving and coping with life in general anxiety, stress, blah, 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 you know, you have to be positive in life. And, you know, we all go through, we all go through our ups and downs and life is like a roller coaster ride for all of us. You know, I can't, I haven't, I haven't met one person that, that has told me they had the perfect life and no stress. You know, we all go through things in life. It's learn how to cope with it, learn how to be positive, not focus on the negative trying to put the negative in back of you and just focus on the positive because the positive will give you the strength, the courage, the wisdom, and the hope to move forward and, and to, you know, get to your goals. I just have to say that I have some friends who are the absolute most amazingly positive people that I have ever met. And while I am not that great at it, I do have an exceptionally good role models in terms of looking at the world with a more positive viewpoint. So I'm very grateful for those friends. But we do have to take our second break of the podcast. And when we come back, we'll be wrapping up our interview with Stacey Chalemi. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. And we'll be right back. Get to Old Navy Saturday and Sunday just in time for back to school. Girls and boys polos are three bucks in stores only. Plus, Saturday only jeans are ten bucks for adults, seven bucks for kids at Old Navy and Old Navy dot com. Valid eight ten to eight eleven. Limit five polos. Select styles only. Get to Old Navy Saturday and Sunday just in time for back to school. Girls and boys polos are three bucks in stores only. Plus, Saturday only jeans are ten bucks for adults, seven bucks for kids at Old Navy and Old Navy dot com. Valid eight ten to eight eleven. Limit five polos select styles only tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts now listen close and hear this out there's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching the golden state media concepts podcast network is here nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage from news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Positivity and the power that having a positive outlook can have on your life. So let's go ahead and get back to that interview. How do you teach someone to be more positive? You know, for someone who's traditionally a very positive person, you know, you look at it like either you're a positive person or you're not. How do you teach someone who's not to become positive? Well, I actually, I wrote a book on positive thinking, and I wrote a book to teach people how to um, to focus. You know, there's there's ways that you can create. Like, I the book I wrote was the uh, secret of happiness and success. And it's master the power of positive thinking, and it talks about how step by step you can take yourself from being negative, or you can take yourself from you know just not seeing the the, the bright light of life, and and changing your your whole way of thinking. And you know, one way of doing it is, is to start a journal. People don't realize how powerful a journal can be, but setting goals long-term and short 
short-term goals. Focus in and, and trying to, you know, trying to push away the negative and just focus on the positive things in your life. Sometimes, you know, we focus on all the negative things happening. We don't realize and we're not grateful for the little things in life. And sometimes we have to be appreciative for the little things in life because you don't, you don't realize how valuable they actually are. You know, we don't realize that, you know, how, how you know, you go outside and have a cup of coffee on your on your deck and, you know, and you and you see the beautiful trees and, and, you know, you don't realize, you know, some countries, you know, they don't have the luxury, you know, they have, you know, they, they the lives are really bad out there and they don't have the luxury and, and people who have conditions, you know, I always say to myself, there's people out there that have it worse than me and that's what you have to remember. And then, you know, you, you focus, you know, and you just focus, you know, on your, your long-term and your short-term goals and you start focusing each day, you know, doing things to get closer to those short and long-term goals and doing things to make yourself feel good about you because everybody has great qualities within themselves. Everybody, you know, but some people don't realize, you know, they have low self-esteem or they they just don't they don't think very highly of themselves and they really need to realize the positive qualities within. And once you start liking yourself and loving yourself and accepting yourself, you'd be surprised how much you can change as a person. I agree on that one. Especially I'm a big person about setting setting short term goals. I mean I, I break goals down to uh each day I want yep. to accomplish a certain number of things and I'll mm-hmm. make a list of things that I that I want to accomplish. No, nothing a little challenging but nothing that's gonna be defeating. But you know, things that you want to accomplish this day, things you want to accomplish this week, this month, you know, six months down the road. And I think that's part of you're you're kind of right because I think these are things that people who consider themselves positive, they just do naturally without thinking right. about it. When you started saying that, I'm like, wow, I do a lot of that. Mm-hmm. That's great because you know it, it becomes like like I said earlier, it becomes part of your lifestyle. When you learn how to live life healthy, you you know that's mentally, physically, spiritually. It all goes into it, one big you know bucket, and you know and then after a while, when you start learning and you start teaching yourself, and you you become this new person. These things become just natural, and it, and it, you know to other people they they have no clue where to begin and how to start. And to others, it's just become it's just become so natural that they don't even think of it as as a chore or something they have to do. It's just part of them. This is what they do, and this is how this is what helps them be who they are. Wonderful. So, Stacey, if people would like to learn more about you, um, I know you have a website. So, if you could give us your website, maybe uh, tell people where they can find you on social media, et cetera, that would be great. Sure. Um, the, I have the website, thecompleteherbalguide.com, and on my website we have thousands of articles, not written just by me, but written by uh, professionals in the health field. Um, we have people, and uh, we have writers that um, you know that focus on you know helping people in, in fitness and eating healthy. We have tons of different recipes. We have all different conditions. Um, you can type any condition in, and you'll get tons of articles for each condition teaching people how to be healthy and how to how to different ways and herbal remedies and and you know different vitamins and different foods because foods are so many foods are packed with vitamins you know people don't realize it but just food alone can actually you know heal your body and it, we teach people how to do, how to do that and you know we have all different things and you can just you know from our menu you can just click onto so many different things and you know we we teach all different areas of life and we have yoga and meditation cuz those are great things that can be very helpful in, in life you know and um you know we teach all different types of of tips and and ways to improve your life and and to improve your health and we also um I have a website um called the uh the vitamin herbal store and uh dot com and it's also we we have a lot of different vitamins and a lot of different supplements and different things in the in the store uh to help people and to 
um, improve people's health. And you know, they can just type in what they're looking for. And we have a lot of vitamins that are very helpful to individuals. And I also have my books also on the website. We have the Complete Herbal Guide, and it's a it's a 500-page book. And it talks about all different herbals and all different things. And it goes into depth from where it, where it began, the origin, to what it does, the positives, the negatives. And, and, and it will teach you a lot of different things. It's kind of like an almanac of, of herbals and, and vitamins and health. Thank you. Do you have any other? No, you've been fantastic. I really appreciate you coming on. I do, too. And um, <laughs> I, we've, we've covered kind of a lot of things sort of. Um, topically, but if, uh, you know, kind of an overview. But is there anything that we haven't touched on that you would really like to talk about before we wrap up? Well, like I mentioned before, you know, like we could always talk about this later if you ever want me to come on again. But you know, meditation and yoga is great. And like I mentioned earlier, ninety percent of health conditions are caused by stress. And yoga and meditation is a great way uh, to release stress and to and to help you focus better on life. A lot of people, when they, it's so simple, anyone can do it. You know, you sometimes people see those amazing, you know, yoga gurus and they do all these crazy poses, you know, and people are like, I can't do that. But you don't have to do that. You know, it, it's it, you know, a lot of yoga is about stretching. You know, and it helps the circulation of the blood. It helps movement. It also helps wake you up. There's yoga poses you can do in the morning, and it helps give you energy. So you take 15 minutes before, you know, you start the day, get up 15 minutes earlier than your norm, do a couple little poses, and you can feel so much better, so much more energetic, so much more, you know, focused. And then at nighttime, they even have, you know, yoga poses that you can do to help you get to sleep, release stress, you know, clear your mind. And uh, so these are things that, you know, people can look into on our website, too. We show different things for everything when it comes to yoga and meditation. And those are two things everyone should try to incorporate a little of in their life, you know, because it could do wonders. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. It was really wonderful talking to you. Oh, same here. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you once again to Stacy for taking the time to speak with us about so many topics. I, I can foresee us having her back on the podcast because we barely scratched the surface of all of the things that she could talk to us about. Thank you um, to my co-host, Tate, for joining me for this interview. And thank you to you, our listeners, for being there with us on this health and wellness journey. We appreciate you so much. We, we can't even, I can't even put into words just how much I appreciate you. So thank you so much for being with us for this and every podcast that we do. Um, in the meantime, and you know, before I talk to you again, hope you're having a great week and be well. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Health and Wellness Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Get to Old Navy Saturday and Sunday just in time for back to school. Girls and boys polos are three bucks in stores only. Plus, Saturday only jeans are ten bucks for adults, seven bucks for kids at Old Navy and Old Navy dot com. Valid eight ten to eight eleven. Limit five polos. Select styles only. Get to Old Navy Saturday and Sunday just in time for back to school. Girls and boys polos are three bucks in stores only. Plus, Saturday only jeans are ten bucks for adults, seven bucks for kids at Old Navy and Old Navy dot com. Valid eight ten to eight eleven. Limit five polos. Select styles only.